there. Um, we're just running behind just a little bit. Um, Could be worse. It's nice it's to nice see a packed house, house this morning, <laughs> regardless of the snow. Woo! And those of you online, you're really missing out. <laughs> so uh, we're going to have a little fun, but we'll talk about that later. Uh, right now, let's just give thanks to the Lord. Why don't we stand and sing praises to him? Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. His love endures forever. For he is good, he is above all things. His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise. With a mighty hand and outstretched arms, his love endures forever. That's been reborn. His love endures forever. Sing praise. Sing praise. Sing praise. Sing praise. Forever God is faithful. Forever God is of God we will carry on his love endures forever sing praise sing praise sing praise sing praise forever God is faithful forever God is strong His love is faithful forever and ever. Thank you. Father, we're just so grateful for your love. And God, I just ask that you would help us to experience your love, to believe you and what you, who you are and what you came to do. Um, Father, we love you. Thank you for our brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank you for this day. Thank you for what you're doing in this day. We come expectant and eager to see your glory and your faithfulness. All right, church. Hey, well, I'm just going to cover announcements real quick, which most of all, most of them are not on this uh, screen for slides. 
but um, I just wanted to let you know a couple things. Glenn Hansen was scheduled to speak today and he couldn't get out like probably a lot of you maybe that are watching online. So Paul is off the cuff, rolling with the Holy Spirit, and he's got a message for us because we are ready in and out of season, correct? <laughs> so um, that'll be fun. Um, and Jim and Peggy are coming, are still on their trip, but they're coming back tonight. So um, we will be seeing them later this week, I assume. So um, for announcements, um, March 18th, I do have that slide, Isaiah. We're having a men's breakfast. Well, I'm not because I'm not a man, but the men get to gather up here on a Saturday and eat some good stuff from 9 to 11 on March 18th. So uh, make a plan because that'll be fun and good. And Brad Jerkson, I hear, is the one that is going to be speaking and testifying of Jesus Christ. Um, going backwards, Isaiah, sorry about that, but March 11th, which is next Saturday, is the next time the Hansons will be doing their Get Your ba Life Back um, session, study, the meets over at the Outpost, and uh, so just a heads up on that, come, even if you didn't come to the first session, it should be good. Um, the, these I do not have slides for, but... Uh, mark, uh, mark your calendars, calendars. April, April 1st, 1st we're going to have, have another congregational prayer, prayer gathering, gathering. And, that and that is, is not 9 a.m. to noon. noon. So, so April 1st, 1st is a Saturday. Saturday. That's, That's not like how we usually do it, where it's where after it's church on Sunday. Sunday. It's going to be on a Saturday. Saturday. So, so make a point of that. that. Uh, keep that, that spot in your calendar open, open so we can all gather together. There will be more details later. We will be having a Good Friday service on April 7th this year, and it looks like I'm reading there's going to be a baptism that night, too. So uh, if you have not yet been baptized and want to, um, you want to probably speak to one of our pastors or elders and get set up that way. Um, and then April 9th, which is the Sunday following, will be Easter Sunday, and we will be meeting I see two services. This is all new to me. I'm reading as we finding out as we go. So 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. So awesome. So anyway, let's get back to praising the Lord. You know, it's really interesting. I know I'm up here on stage, obviously, almost every week, and everybody has their seat. You know, and I, I don't know if it's registered. Do you have registered seats for people? Oh, there's like brass plaques, you know, <laughs> name tags on everybody. It's funny, cute. though. You know, we have like 40 people here, 30 people here, and it's you guys are just, you know, dotted all over the church. But that's cool if you're comfortable. That's fine. If you're comfortable, that means you're going to stand up and sing really loud. That's right. And I kind of anticipated a day like today. And um, so I usually don't do a whole lot of gospel throughout the year, but I do once or twice. A year and so we're going to do a little gospel this is going to be like you know a revival so stand up man let's praise our god and those of you online you're missing out uh you can listen but it's just not the same as being here and sharing with our family have you been to jesus for the cleansing power are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they Aside your garments that are stained with sin and be washed in the blood of the Lamb. There's a fountain flowing for the soul unclean. Oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Are you washed in the blood, in the soul cleansing blood? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? When that roll is called. 
sound in time shall be no more and the morning breaks eternal bright and fair when the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore and that roll is called up yonder i'll be there when that There's a lot of truth in those songs. Yeah, just love them. Thank and you, Paul's way in the back, did you all see him dancing? It was really ugly. I mean, I'm glad. To, but, but Paul, that's okay. <laughs> yeah. Hey, caught it on the first one. How about that? Lord God, we come and thank you so much for washing us making us clean and claiming us for your own. Thank you so much that you are the light of the world, that you have revealed yourself to us, and we can be yours. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh. 
Well, I wonder so aimless, my life filled with sin. I wouldn't let my dear Savior in. Then Jesus came like a stranger in the night. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I saw the light. I saw the light. No more darkness, no more night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I was a blind man to wander alone. Worries and fears I claimed for my own. Then like a blind man that God gave back his sight. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I saw the light. I saw the light. No more darkness, no more night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I was a fool to wander and stray, but straight is the gate and narrow the way. Now I have traded the wrong for the right. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I saw Oh, they tell me of an unclouded day. 
Lord God, thank you that we have this hope. You have given us hope. Lord, we pray that you would come now and speak to us, that you would inspire our Pastor Paul and show us what you have for us today. Thank you, God, that you have claimed us and we can know you. Pray, Lord, right now that you would help us to know you better. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You may be seated. You know, I caught something on that last worship song. He will sit on the throne that is whiter than snow. It just caught me. Because I've been catching a lot of white snow, but it's not sitting on any throne that I know of. But let me tell you something. I do look forward to the day when that roll is called up yonder, Brian, we're going to be there, brother. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I believe that this is the first time in the history of Pollock Pines Community Church where we are actually going to be having more brothers and sisters online than we have here. However... Let it be known, these are the brave souls right here. <laughs> these are the brave ones. Safety first, safety first. And those who have Subaru vehicles, <laughs> they don't have to worry about safety because Subarus are safety in the highest. It is good to be with you, family. Well, I am... Uh, well, I am looking for an introduction. I invite you to turn with me in your Bibles to James chapter 1. James chapter 1. We're going to be searching the scriptures to find more and more truth to apply to our life. This is a very difficult and challenging time for Pastor Paul to try and fill in the shoes of our wonderful senior pastor, Jim Price. But by the grace of God and by the mercies and power of the Holy Spirit, I'm going to give it a heavenly try. Can I get an amen? amen? They picked a man to fill this pulpit this morning that exemplifies the verse in Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. Let your light shine before men in such a way that they will see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. They selected a man that shines on this hilltop with a 110-watt bulb. He is a man that loves his wife loves his children, is a productive member of society, is a good Bible teacher. And it breaks my heart that Glenn Hansen is not here this morning. So you have to settle for Pastor Paul. Okay, watch your laughs and giggles, okay? Includes you guys too. So James chapter 1, verses 2 through 5 the title of my message this morning is The Joy of the Lord is My Strength. I'm going to let that resonate. The Joy of the Lord is My Strength. You could find that in Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10. Then he said to them, Go, eat of the fat, drink of the sweet, and send portions to him who has nothing prepared. Sounds like me this morning. For this day is holy to our Lord. Do not be grieved. Everybody. Heavenly Father, thank you, thank you, thank you for sending your son Jesus to come down and be the lamb that takes away the sins of the world. Thank you, Heavenly Father and Lord Jesus, 
for sending the Holy Spirit to be our power, our teacher, our guide, our convictor, our indwelling God that will guide us in all truth. We proclaim this morning that the joy of the Lord is in fact our strength. And Lord, we read scripture back to you in Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. We could do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And so take this time, Holy Spirit, be our teacher. Guide us in all truth through your holy word. Let us glorify, magnify, and proclaim the Lord Jesus in this, his church, as we study your word and apply it to our life. For we ask this in Jesus' name, and God's people said, amen. Amen. So follow with me in James chapter 1, verses 2, 3, 4, and 5. Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance or patience in some of your versions. And let endurance have its perfect result that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. And if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of the Father who gives it beyond reproach, and it will be given to him. Folks, I want to share with you a three-point sermon that consists of joy, trials, and wisdom. How in the world can the author of this book, the half-brother of Jesus, start out his book saying, Consider it all joy, my brethren. Let me share with you a little bit of the history and background of what was happening during that time. The church was under great persecution. Christians were being martyred. Anyone who was claiming Jesus Christ as Lord, the way We're going through some heavy, heavy trials and testings. James, in the form of an encouraging word to them, wants to start out the book by saying, just consider it, brothers, sisters, all joy when you encounter what you're going to be encountering. Not if, but when. And let me share with you, family, there is a clear distinction between the word joy and happiness. Don't get it twisted. I believe with all my heart that James used that three-letter word for a very important, significant message. Because I want to zero in for a second about the joy that he's talking about. Joy is not happiness. Let me just expel the word happiness because in this context, he's not talking about happiness because happiness is a happening. You could be happy if you go to Disneyland. You could be happy if you wake up and your car is not buried in snow. You could be happy if you know that you're getting ready to participate in a five-course meal. But all of those that I just mentioned start and end at some point in time. It's what happens at the time that makes us happy. In contrast to that... Joy comes from an eternal source. Joy comes from within. 
A synonym, a synonym in my mind is Jesus and joy. Joy and Jesus. Folks, you need to understand. The Apostle Paul, Peter, the disciples, experienced true joy being with the Lord Jesus Christ for three years of his public ministry. There was something about joy that was internal, not external. It was internal. There was a security. There was a peace that surpasses all understanding. They were experiencing the fullness of joy. And I want to share with you John chapter 15. These are the words of Jesus. He says, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be made full. This is my commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. See, folks, this is a really exciting thing for me to share with you. This world could never experience the joy that Jesus is talking about. People outside of Christ do not have the joy of Jesus. But today, this morning, let us praise Jesus for the fact that we could experience that joy because Jesus lives in us, through us, and around us. Amen? Amen. Amen. So he says, consider that joy when you encounter various trials. Trials. Somebody is saying right now, Pastor Paul, what's the difference between a trial and temptation? I'm glad you asked. Temptation, family, is for tragedies. The purpose of being tempted by the devil is so that something tragic will happen when you fall into that temptation. Let me remind you of Matthew chapter 4, 1 through 11, when Jesus was tempted by the devil after fasting 40 days and 40 nights. Each of the three temptations from Satan that he tried to present to Jesus didn't work. He used scripture. He tried to get Jesus to bow down, to turn the stones into bread. Three things, the pride of life, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh didn't work. And so let me be clear. When I share with you, James is not saying when you encounter various temptations. It is trials. For those of you taking notes, please note that trials are for triumph. Trials are for triumph. The Lord does not put us through trials to see us fail. The Lord does not lead us on the straight and narrow so that we could fail. Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing, not guessing, not assuming, knowing that the testing of your faith is going to produce something. 
What's it going to produce? Depends on the trial. It depends on your walk with Christ. It depends on where you are in your journey with Jesus. I've had several trials this past week. Some of you could identify with a lot of them. The devil is mad that he lost a soul that he thought he had. He has been coming at me and a lot of us with temptations. The Holy Spirit just expels them, puts in a trial and says, let me test you, son, on how faithful you are going to be to my word. When I tell you to do something, I don't care about how you feel about it. I don't care about what your opinion is. I don't care about who told you this or you've always done it that way. Number one, consider it joy. Number two, know that I'm testing your faith so that I could produce growth in you, maturity in you. And so folks, look at me. When you get put in a position where God is testing your faith, don't murmur and complain. Thank him. I could do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Rejoice in the joy that the Lord has given us. Pastor Paul, that's easier said than done. That's how you may feel. But it doesn't matter how we feel. We put the facts before feelings. And we put our faith in the facts and we accomplish God's word and his will for us. He said, this is my commandment. This is my commandment that you love one another. Love one. No, I'm not joining the worship team. Listen to me, folks. How many of us struggle at times when we're called to love the unlovable? Oh, boy. I see hands, and I didn't even ask for them. I know. I see those hands out there in uh, YouTube land. Folks, it's the testing of our faith. Faith without works, faith without love is nothing. It's dead. God is calling us, his people, to experience the joy even through the testing of our faith, which is a trial. How many of us are experiencing more trials than we wish to count? Some of us folks are literally in courtrooms fighting in certain trials. Some of us are struggling in our marriages. It is a trial to love our spouse. It is a struggle to love our children. Folks, let me tell you something. Jesus knows exactly what we're going through. Jesus has been through all the trials and testings known to man. But he was obedient even unto the point of death and death on the cross. And so, folks, I encourage you to embrace Jesus and his joy and plow through those trials so that you could Grow up in Christ and get ready for the next one. Because while we are on this earth, family, there is going to be one trial after another. But listen to me. Here's the joy of it. If we are rooted and grounded, grounded and centered and focused in Christ, the trial should not phase us. And 
If we are suffering through a trial, it's for the sake of godliness. Church, a lot of things that are not preached in some churches, I'm not referring to our church, is the fact that Christians must learn how to suffer. We must equip ourselves for the days of suffering, the moments of suffering. Blessed are those who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, it says in Matthew 5 in the Beatitudes. Folks, I'm bringing you a message of joy. I'm wanting to prepare you for the trials that we will have in this lifetime. But in verse 5, it says, But if any one of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all generously and without reproach, and it will be given to him. Folks, I'll be the first one to raise two hands and say, I need some wisdom on how I'm going to get through this trial, Lord. I need your wisdom, oh God. This trial is above and beyond what I am able to do apart from you. Remember, it says in John 15, 5, apart from you I could do Nothing. So remember that. The, I could do all things through who? Christ who strengthens us. Remember that the joy of the Lord is going to be your strength with the prerequisite, a presupposition, if you will, that you are walking in the power of the Holy Spirit. You are abiding in Christ. Don't anybody complain and murmur when your one foot is in the world, the other is in the church on Friday and, and Sundays, and you're going through all this madness. Oh, pastor, everything's going wrong for me. I woke up the other day with a hangover because I was at the Pine Lodge bar. You're suffering because you brought it on yourself. Folks, you don't have to bring trials and testings on your own terms and con conditions. God Almighty will do that for you. It will be for the purpose of testing you and your faith for his glory, not ours. Turn with me to James chapter 3. James chapter 3, verses 15 through 18. And I want to share with you, family, that there's two types of wisdom, okay? Two types of wisdom. Verse 15 says in the book of James chapter 3, this wisdom is not that which comes down from heaven. But it, let, let's back up to verse 13. Let's back up to verse 13. Who among you is wise and understanding? Just who among you is wise and understanding? Let him show by his good behavior, his deeds, listen to this and mark it in your Bible, his deeds in the gentleness of wisdom. But if you have bitter jealousy, self-ambition in your heart, do not be arrogant and so lie against the truth. This wisdom is not that which comes down from above, but is earthly, natural, and demonic. Folks, let me tell you something. The devil and this world has a multitude of wisdom 
that we could be happy with for a moment. Dude, it'll be wise if you do that. Yeah, you're suffering right now. Go to the bar, have a drink, smoke weed, do this, do that. You want to cheat on your spouse? Go ahead, man. It's okay. It'll satisfy your cravings, the lust of your flesh. If you're jealous, it's okay. Get your jealousy out. Do what you got to do. Handle it. That is not the wisdom that James is talking about when he says, consider it all joy when you encounter various trials. If anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. God is not going to give you that type of wisdom. And it's high time that the church starts looking to heaven, to the word of God for wisdom to get through life's trials and not Lean on the world and the world system to give you wisdom. Amen. We need to get counsel. We need to ask another mature brother or sister, I'm in this situation. I'm facing this type of a trial. What should I do? I'm becoming desperate. So and so and so and so said, I could get it done and get through it doing this or that. Question number one, will this or that glorify God? Question number two, did this or that come from God Almighty? Or number three, are you being duped because you're desperate? Oh, I got to do it, man. I need money. I need money, man. I got to go get it one way or the other. Things at home aren't, aren't, aren't going too good, man. I got to step out of my home to find some peace, some happiness. Don't do it, family. Don't do it. Consider it all joy when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith is producing patience in you. We need endurance. We, learn, we have to learn, family, how to get through the hard times so that we could enjoy the good times. Listen to what it says in Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Even though I go through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Let me give you a nugget. Let me give you a nugget. The best learning process, the best maturing growing up process is not at the top of the mountain, but in the midst of the valley. You have one of two choices. You could go into the valley and then back to the alley, or you could go into the valley and proceed into victory. Folks, it's our choice. God presents it before us. Follow me, pick up your cross, deny yourself. And folks, we're good at the mountaintop following, but once we go through the valley, some of us get so overwhelmed. Oh, well, what am I going to do? I'm going back to the alley. Yeah, that's why they call me a no good alley cat crumb cake. Because I keep going back to the alley instead of to victory. It's high time that we in this church, in this body of believers, start coming together with one another when we're going through the valley. It's time that we as a church embrace one another while we're going through the valley of trials. And that we help us go to victory and not back to the alley. Folks, the greatest need we have in our church 
in showing love is not on Sunday morning and Friday night. It's the days in between that we are going through crisis, that we are going through troubles. And I am so joyful to be a part of a church where I see my brothers and sisters living a sacrificial life for the glory of God, and they're out there in the streets, they're out there in the valleys, in the alleys, and they're helping one another get to the next episode. Folks, Sherris and I bought a manufactured home a couple of years ago right here. And before it closed escrow, we went to see our beautiful new two-bedroom, two-bath home. Only to find our carport mangled, destroyed in pieces up against the house, and we were devastated. We thought, what in the world? Oh, well, that was that little snowstorm we had. It's going to happen again. Well, thanks for your encouragement. But blessed be the name of the Lord. We had this much snow as of the day before yesterday. Oh, actually, yesterday. A servant of the Most High yesterday got to our house. Now, let me tell you something. It wasn't easy. But here's how you, here's how you motivate a man of God. You tell him gumbo is cooking in the kitchen. Gumbo. Macaroni salad. I kid you not. He was shoveling. And <sighs> Once I said gumbo and macaroni salad, woo! The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord. <laughs> Folks, he came alongside us and he loved us. Now, Pastor Paul. I was going to get up on the roof, but I have a wife who loves me. (laughs) And if I got on that roof, I could promise you I wouldn't have been eating gumbo and macaroni salad. I'd be eating Marshall's cafeteria food. Because I would have. I would have taken a nosedive. Why are you laughing, Belinda? Belinda. Good. She said I'd be eating some snow. Yes. Folks, what is the message for this morning, for today? Listen to me, family. I'm sharing the word. Consider it joy. And if you can't, during that difficult time I've been there, call a brother or a sister. Call upon the name of the Lord. And then ask God to bring in the support team, the cavalry, brothers and sisters. How many of you would respond to a brother and sister in need? I see all those hands in YouTube land. I know it to be true because I'm a part of this church. And it happens all the time. I'll share one more quick story about how we consider it joy when we're facing difficult trials. A lady in our church had to go and get cataract surgery. She lives over off of Begonia, up there past wherever that is. And and her house is way up there. 
and the street is way down here. And between there and here, there is a mountain of this much snow. She's already struggling physically without the snow. But a dear sister in this church calls me up and says, Pastor, pray for me. Is there anyone you know that could help me go get this dear sister that needs to be in Sacramento by 11 o'clock? I said, I'll meet you at the church at 8 a.m. And between the power of the Holy Ghost, you and I, we're going to go get the sister and we're going to get her to Sacramento. She picks me up. We go to the residence and she pulls out a sled. One of those motorcycle sleds. And I said, sister, for the who's going on that? Her. I said, she could barely walk and she only sees out of one eye. That's okay. That's okay. Between all of us, we, we could do it. It's okay. I'll follow you. We went up there, and by the grace of God, and I have pictures to prove what I'm saying. She bundled up that dear sister with about 42 coats, <laughs> took off her shoes while I was holding her and put on snow boots. Snow was way up to here. And she says, now, honey, go ahead and just get on there. Oh, which one would you like, this sled or that sled? Give her a choice. <laughs> and by the grace of God, we took her. I'm holding her. We set her down. Her knees were wobbling. And she grabbed those handlebars and said, let's do this. We made it down that slope, put her in the car, stuck me in the back seat, thank God. And we got her out of there. Point being, through the trials, through the testing of our faith, are we willing to go down a rocky snow packed home to get a dear sister or brother to their next appointment. Let us stand. As the worship team makes their way up, every head bowed, every eye closed. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the life experiences as crazy as they may seem to us. God, they're nothing in comparison of how you operated in the Old Testament and New. How you used a donkey to speak. How you used a rock to quench thirst. Father, we need to do the simple things in life. And just love one another through trials, through the testing of our faith. We need to embrace you, Lord Jesus, and the joy that you have given us. And when all else fails, we need to call upon your wisdom to make it through. Father, we are your hands, we're your feet. Where your heart, where your eyes, your ears, lead this, your church, into a path that is pleasing to you, that loves one another at whatever cost it may be. Let us lean on the everlasting arms of Jesus.
I love you, Lord. This church, your people love you. We love one another, and I want to say thank you for the abundance of love and support and kindness and goodness and obedience that there is a whole army of faith-walking people here, Lord. Take us to higher heights in you, my Lord. Let us preach the gospel on this entire hilltop for your glory. And we ask it all in Jesus' name and God's people said, Thank you, family. I love um, God is so awesome. Thank you, Paul. That was great. I chose this song uh, last Monday, not knowing what Glenn Hansen was going to preach on. And Paul, at the last minute, preached on joy today. And this song talks about the joy of our Lord Jesus Christ. God just works that way. I capo this first. Otherwise, someone's going to be singing way down there. I come to the garden alone While the dew is still on roses And the voice I hear falling on The Son of God discloses, and He walks with me, and He talks with me, and He tells me I am His own.
Abba Father, thank you that you walk with us and you talk with us. That you give us your wisdom, your grace, and your mercy, and you call us your own. We are grateful beyond measure in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, brothers and sisters, may you abide in him as he abides in you. And may you know the peace and the power of his presence today and this week. Thank you for worshiping with us this morning. Praise our God. Are you washed in the blood, in the soul cleansing? 